Yo, Matt Sapal and I have become like best friends. Off the first phone call, we're like, What? Did we just become best friends? Yup. How many of you new to business are eagerly hoping that mom, dad, your BFFs will blow up your phone waiting to buy from you? I consider him the prospecting king. Through the grace of God, I was prospected. I was a cold market prospect. <laughs> I remember literally praying and I said, you just need to be 64. I will spend the rest of my life giving back. I went from being a 21 year old broke college kid to making my first million by 29. The very first thing that I did was I called my mom and I was so excited. And you know, the first words out of her mouth, were you're an idiot <laughs> your mindset needs to be Whoa. some will some won't so what next tell me yes tell me no but tell me quick because i gotta go thousands of lives were changed all because of one bolder moment I made more money with strangers than I ever have with friends and family. And and lead programs are out there. I mean, you're, you're going to run across those. Lead programs are nothing. Trust me. I know. I used to spend fifteen thousand dollars a month on direct mail, dinner seminars, newspaper ads, all these different things, just to get customers, just to get people to buy. But if I didn't know how to really prospect, turn those leads into from prospects to appointments to sales to new business partners, to potential employees, to potential referral sources. If I didn't have this skill, and you're gonna learn this skill from this gentleman today, you know, there, there's a saying out there, give a man a lead, he'll eat for a day. But teach him how to <laughs> self-generate and get leads, and prospect those leads, and cultivate those leads. That entrepreneur will live forever. So that being said, I've got this gentleman on. I'm excited for him because uh, 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 of what he's doing in business today. Mr. Cesar Rodriguez, I consider him the prospecting king, okay? Prospecting Kim. According to his bio, and the things I've seen in his video, he's exposed flaws in outdated old school sales techniques and processes that unintentionally trigger objections and skepticism. Have you ever done it with somebody? You're talking to somebody about your business. Da, da, da. Is this this? Is this that? Is this this? They, they try to jump to conclusion. You know why? Because you're, you're getting taught and using old school marketing techniques and um, prospecting techniques. Uh, Caesar's got advanced knowledge in persuasion, psychology, and neuro linguistic programming (NLP) that leads to breakthroughs and quicker results. It's all over social media. So, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the show, Mr. Caesar Rodriguez. What's going on, brother? Yo, I appreciate you so much, man. Yo, it is so fun hanging out with this dude. For those of you that don't know him on a personal level, did we just become best friends? Absolutely. You know, um, because yep. philosophically, there are very few leaders out there that have the type of mindset and the type of drive and just really have this very unique package that he brings to the table and to the marketplace, which is why he's been so blessed and so successful. And you know, why all of you guys that follow him, you know, love him to death. I saw him for probably like a day on Instagram and just was like, all right, this dude is awesome. Let's do this, man. My goal and my focus is to just elevate people and help them have breakthroughs and take their life and their businesses to the next level. Uh, you know, in my journey, I've discovered some things that uh, now I happily give back and share because uh, once upon a time, I remember being in my small little apartment, you know, just struggling. And I was building my business full time with cold, cold market strangers walking up to people. And uh, I remember just like literally praying. And I said, if you just let me be six people. I said, I will spend the rest of my life giving back and teaching people everything that I know. Mm. So I went from being a 21 year old broke college kid to making my first million by 29. And the rest of my years have since been giving back and fulfilling that promise. So that's the reason why I'm here. Come on, baby. By the way, if you guys are watching this, you tune in right now. This is Cesar Rodriguez, the prospecting king. For those of you who are sharing this video, we're going to select the person that shared this video the most. Guess these three books from me to you. So, so Caesar, uh, you, you started off, you know, from 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 Jersey, right? <laughs> now in North Carolina, um, yeah. you know, we're talking on the phone. Your journey for, as a as a teenager, uh, because you're following mentor. Talk to us real quick. Your transition from from New Jersey down to North Carolina as a late teenager. I grew up in New Jersey my whole life. I come from a family of five, and my mom, she was a single mom, you know. And even when my dad was present for my uh, life, uh, he wasn't really around. For uh, that early childhood, I pretty much raised my little sister you know so if you can imagine you know uh me being eight to nine years older than her you know like you know coaching her soccer practices as the assistant coach my mom's the head coach you know so i've, I've always been dad you know um but i wasn't a great student 
when I uh, applied for college, it was my senior year, and I was like, oh crap, you know, I have a 1.9 GPA. Like, if I want to get into college, I should probably at least have a C average. So I applied to, you know, a ton of schools. I only got accepted to two. Uh, one of them took me, and they were. It was in North Carolina, and I, I was so excited to be chosen. Uh, I just like sight unseen. I was like, "That's where I'm going." Did you know anybody? No, I knew nothing. I literally was just like, I was like, "Where is High Point, North Carolina?" Okay, and honestly, Matt, they didn't even take me as a full. They took me as a probationary student, where I had to to go for the summer first, and then if I proved myself by getting a, a decent enough. Uh, Average GPA, I guess, during that summer session, then they would allow me to pay, you know, the full tuition、yeah. to go to school for four years, and、um, and then I discovered network marketing my senior year at 21. Because compared to a traditional job, why didn't you just say, you know what, let me go to school nine to five, punch punch out, get my degree, get my diploma, whatever the case may be, get my certifications, get my education? Why did you choose network marketing as a first stab in business? Uh, so I was totally going to choose that life in business. I went to school for sport management. Was working at the mall at, at GNC because I was really into fitness and being in good shape and stuff. So I knew that. So I had that job and I had an internship at a coliseum. But、uh, through the grace of God, I was prospected while working at a mall. I was a cold market prospect, you know. So、uh, it was、um, around this time, you know, 18 years ago. And I went to an event and I saw people making. Thirty thousand dollars a month, Matt, and I wanted to make thirty thousand dollars a year. And the testimonial that won me over, facts tell stories. So,、mm. testimonial that won me over was a Vietnamese lady、uh, with broken English talking about how she just bought her mom a brand new minivan. Man, to buy my mom a car and to have it only be one month's income, like the world that these people are living in is crazy. Like, I need to figure out how to do what they're doing. And so that's how I discovered network marketing. I turned to the guy at that moment, and I literally said, "I'm in. Let's do it." I love it, man. That that by the way, you're talking about the Vietnamese story reminds me. That reminds me of a Vietnamese infomercial I saw back in the '80s and '90s. His name was Tommy Vu. He's sitting on the boat. I got big bow. I got pascal. <laughs> I got big money. How come you can't do that? Come to my seminar. I love it. I think I think even in Living Color did a parody video, bro. So let, let's let's dive into it, man. On a scale of one to ten, where do you rank? Prospecting, right, as a skill set to start building a successful business. Well, I would rate it as a ten. Think about it, right? What does everyone want? Everyone wants more people on the team, more customers. Well, where do those people come from? If there's not a foundation of you being able to have the ability to talk to someone and to quickly engage them to get them interested in what you're doing, if you neglect that strength. Then it will permeate throughout your entire business. You could get all the leads in the world coming to you on autopilot. You can buy leads like you've talked about,、yep. and all that stuff. But still, all prospecting is is making a friend and steering the conversation into whatever direction that you want it to be in. And in our case, since we're entrepreneurs, business. And once you learn that skill. You will never be hungry. You will never be broke. I literally, and you know, if, if we get more into the, the details of my story, I was able to literally write my own paychecks and not need a full time job. So okay, cool. I need an extra thousand dollars. I just need it this month. I need to talk to like one more person a day. What are some of the? And if, if you were to say, okay, these are the top three th things that all rookie entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, people just starting off in business and sales, number of things that they do wrong and and what they need to avoid and shore up before they they implode their market before they even get a chance to really start. Sure. So I and I can speak very well on this topic because when I first got started in network marketing, very first thing that I did was I called my mom and I called her up and I was so excited to tell her that I was going to now get started in the direct sales network marketing industry, and you know the first words out of her mouth. Were you're an idiot? <laughs> This is what you want to do with your degree. And listen, for some of you, it may not be your mom. For some of you, it's your best friend. For some of you, it's your spouse. You know, and it's like that's where that expression comes. Those who you think will won't. Yep. Those who you think won't will. You know, and the number one most supportive person in my life, my entire life, literally was like. No, you're an idiot. This is not a good idea. Like、wow. we spent four years trying to get this degree, and this is what you want to do with it. Like, how about the safety and security of a job? Like, like you want to throw all that away, all the studying, all the tuition, like all for not? Because literally, I went to an event one day and was like, "This is what I'm doing with my life. Last four years, I don't even care. Like, I made some great friends, learned some stuff. This is it. This is the vehicle." So the first hundred people I talked to told me no. I know now, looking back, some of the things that I did wrong. The problem was I didn't have any posture.、Ooh. I didn't know what to say. 
Osher, you guys take yeah, a note. That's one, of, that's one of the biggest mistakes is people do not have posture. Posture, for those of you that don't know, is the way that I define it. My definition of posture is the strength, the position of strength or weakness that you're coming across in every encounter. So is that a physical thing? It Just is. It, it is all of the above. Yeah, you know, because your physiology, um, your physiology affects your mindset. No one wants to jump on board a burning ship, mm -hmm. right? If your ship is sinking, right, and it's there's a hole in the hull, no one wants to jump on board of that. Here's a couple Caesarisms. Everything you chase will run away. Everything you run away from will chase you. Your mindset needs to be Woo! some will, some won't, so what next? Tell me yes, tell me no, but tell me quick because I gotta go. I'm going to achieve my dreams without you. You know, this is the swagger that you walk around 24 seven. It's like, look, apart from you and your vehicle, they will probably not live the life that you live mm. or will live freedom, fulfillment. Most people will not get that apart from you. However, with you, they can. So you have to understand you are the prize. You are the gift giver. But but Caesar, you're 18, 20, 23 years old when you started this stuff. I'm thinking about because I'm 45 today. I'm thinking about 20 years ago when I started business. How, how was it like for me when I was in my early 20s attempting to have Pasha because I wasn't very yeah. confident in what I was bringing. And, and I understand. And this is the thing that I encountered too, because I have forever looked 10 years younger than I really am. You look young for your age too. So when I was 21, you better believe, you know, I was probably looking like I was 18 and I didn't figure this out for a while. But the minute I did, I had all the same stories that everyone has. Oh, you know, I'm too young. I don't, you know, no one's going to take me seriously. How could I talk about a financial opportunity, which I know a lot of you guys have, because maybe you haven't made it. You just have to believe that one day that you will. One of the things that I did is I always had um, a, a ton of, once I discovered the importance of posture, I constantly worked at it. It's like a strength, you know, you start playing with it. One of the things that I recommend doing is always oversteer. Always oversteer. Oversteer when you're trying something different. Oversteer on that habit. And then you find out where the real finish line is. Because the problem with most of us is that we're not being bold enough. Mm. You know, if you're not bold enough, what's going to happen is you're not going to ask that question that would actually close them. One of the things that I did early on is but to use my myself as an advantage in my young age is instead of trying to act like I was the big deal, I would just defer to a third party and I would instead act like I was like the intern. So see, sometimes people, you know, in, in a prospecting process, well, people say, well, tell me more about it. Uh, you know, and, and I've seen a lot of guys, for example, I got prospected. I love getting prospected, by the way. Yeah, me too. Uh, but uh, I got prospected in Whole Foods and the guy was skirting around telling me what the name of his company was. Well, you have to understand that we live in a world of total transparency. You don't have to be afraid to hide the name of your company. What you just need to do is you need to be really good at giving it to them and then removing it from their brain immediately and then detracting and sidetracking to something else. One of the things that will make you lose posture is trying to be like, we're the best growing company in the this, 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 this. Sometimes when you go on that, it's like you're like on a marching band, like just doing this. And they're like, yo, why are you selling this thing so hard? Got it. You know, so it's just, it's a thing. So the focus goes from the name to like, do I want to be a high net worth individual? That's where their brain goes because you painted this picture of imagination. Cool. All right, give me here. So, so season the name of our company is PHP Agency. We do insurance and retirement services where guys like Oscar De La Hoya dropped his $10 million to grow an expander firm. Where, where people like Pat Riley, uh, Billy Bean, Magic Johnson, and recently Kevin Hart came out to a convention because they love what we're doing and helping people. Because what we're teaching people is what the wealthy know about money. We're just filtering that, that down to the multicultural middle class. Is that something either yourself or somebody that you know would be interested in? Because we have a fat chart program to help the, the brand new person get started. Wow. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Now, the thing that I would do. Oh, what would you tweet? Would, yeah, yeah. So I would break that up. By okay. asking some type of question, because if someone just says, what do you do? Right. And then you go like on too long of a monologue that has aspects yeah. of sales, then what ends up happening is the feeling that they have psychologically is like, okay, this person's pitching me. You give a statement and then you ask an answer obvious question where they're obviously going to be like, oh yeah, Kevin Hart. I love Kevin Hart. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and, and brother, for, the, for those of you that's watching this, uh, listen guys, you know, I'm a call into the company. I'm a seven figure income earner and I still need to work on my game. So there ain't no shame in my game to improve my game, to improve my game, Absolutely. right? Otherwise I'm lame. And somebody would be calling somebody else's name. <laughs> Listen, guys, this is, this is one of the biggest traits that you want in a leader. 
running. He just literally said he's the co-owner and here he is taking advice, taking notes, showing you guys what real leadership is about right here. He's got a great book, leadership quotes and all that, but this is what the real ones do. Cool, man. So um, another question I asked for you is what we're teaching here, is this a teachable, learnable skill that repeated over and over again, just like anything else, the average person come start to become excellent at and superior at doing. Absolutely. And if you need any proof of that, you're looking at it. So let me take a few moments here to inspire some of you. I can remember the day, the day where I recognized that I had to make a bold decision about my future. And I was sitting in a vent. I'm in the back of the room <laughs> and everyone's hand goes up except for mine. Really? But it was at that moment that I had to make a decision. There was a fork in the road and the decision I made is, okay, am I going to do what everyone else does when times get tough and quit? Or am I going to lean into the wind and keep pushing forward and make a commitment to make myself one of the best whoever's done it. So I realized that prospecting was the number one thing that if I got good at, I could win. Yes. So listen, there's so many things, look, there's two things. And I like to make this very easy for people. There are two things that you need to get good at. If you're good at these two things, everything else in between will kind of solve itself and figure itself out. Number one is prospecting. Number two is closing. Two things. If you get really good at getting lots of people's information and, and it's just if you can get really good at filling your funnel, picture this funnel, if you, get, you can get like most people's funnel looks like this, real skinny, right? They get a few people drip in and then it's like maybe close it tight, maybe a few people come out. But if I was like, if I could just get lots of people in and then I could get really good about opening up that closing so the lots of people that come in, you know, actually do something and get in. If I could just get my funnel to go from here to open, that's prospecting, and then get that closing, then I could just have a freaking pipeline. Uh, you know, you know, oftentimes people go prospecting, speaking of, speaking of prospecting um, in, in the public, people say, I'm going to go to the mall, I'm going to go prospecting. Uh, and, and person for Caesar, I, that's something I've just, individual for me, I've, I've just never done. I just, sure. I've, never felt, I've just never felt comfortable. Uh, however, I'm, if I'm going to the car wash, yeah, if, uh, you do it when you're out. Yeah, if I'm uh, at, the, at the dealership, get my old changed. Yeah. I, I prospect as I go. Um, that's just more natural to me. Is, is there anything right or wrong about that? So number one, there's nothing wrong with that. And that is a thing that we teach. For those of you that don't have the luxury just having to be out of your house, which was the case with me, you know? So for myself, it was a matter of survival. I had to train myself to be out of my house um, to pro with the intent to prospect. And so I became a professional hangout artist. If you don't have enough appointments set for your week, if you're not doing enough presentations, then consider going out with the intent to prospect. If you want to be one of the greats, if you want to get to the point where people do not tell you no, where you can overcome any objection, where you can be a master of persuasion, and I'm here to tell you it is worth the ride. But the way to attain it is through all of this personal development we're doing and to develop a skill and an ability to predict the future. I can play mental chess better than anyone that I'm talking to because I have gotten every objection that you could get and every variation that they could come. That comes from just being out there and hearing all of those objections and trying out different things because I had someone go, what's the name of your company? And then I said this and they're like, and I was like, okay, so when someone says it like this, I don't reply back with that one again. And then I, I hope mm. to, then then I hope that I get that same objection again. So then I can try another angle. And then when that one works and I respond like that, I'm like, that was the one. And then I hope that I get that one again so I could try it again and deliver it the same way. And I'm like, that worked again. Okay, let's try it again. I got that objection. It worked again. That's the one. I want you to shift your mind for a moment. And stop thinking about the rejection that you're gonna get as a bad thing, the nose and all that type of stuff. Start looking at it as all you're doing is your goal is to get all of the objections. You wanna get them all. You wanna get them multiple times and multiple variations because that's the only way 
that you're going to know how to truly overcome them and address them. And you're going to start to put together formulas and you're going to start to have approaches and that's how you become so good. So all this stuff is guys, is it's practice. Your goal, if you want to be like me, I wanted to be legendary. I wanted to be introduced by people like Matt freaking Sapala, <laughs> the co-owner of one of the hottest, fastest growing freaking companies right now. And the stuff that he has going with his culture and what you guys, for those of you that follow him, man, God, like I just tell him, I'm like, yo, your culture for your company is off the chain. Like the training that you guys are giving, like to get a compliment from him to say, this guy is the king of prospecting. To get something like that, that's what I got into this game for. Mm. What are you in this game for? You got to get good. You got to be bold and you got to make a focus to be a badass. And that doesn't happen with you sitting in your house, not going out there and practicing the stuff that we teach and getting those objections and celebrating when you get them. Because all it is, is it's just testing. So, Man, I, I love it, brother. Uh, you've been so generous with your time. You've been so generous with your, you've very, been very complimentary. And you've been very ins inspirational and you gave some practical how-tos. Listen, guys, uh, I, I know a lot of you guys uh, follow this content, but there's some specific things that Caesar's doing with his B10XB movement, as well as some of the free products you can get from his website. So I want you guys to make sure you visit Caesar's stuff, di uh, digest and consume his content. Caesar, uh, uh, talk to us about some of the things you have programmed. By the way, I'm saying this because I I'm guiding it to him. If you choose to buy some products or books from him, I make $0. Yeah. From, uh, this is this is 100% something that you guys want to do, an investment into your business. Remember last night I talked about uh, uh, the people are cheap in a business, never get anything out of their business. So you need to invest in your business and this this is this is this is it. So C's talked to us about some of the products and some of the uh, uh, tools that you help people to prospect better. I don't know if we talked about my cold market prospecting formula. I don't have time to go into all that here because I know we're wrapping up, but I literally have a webinar that you can go to and watch for free. Actually, the free webinar shows live footage of me prospecting in the streets, breaking down the exact formula that I share. I have an entire course where I literally walk up to people and through the eyes of the hidden cameras, you actually get to watch me like going up to people in the mall. You know, you get to see me walking up to people in the street, you know, in strip malls, inside of department stores. Like it, it's completely transparent. That training that I, I give my six step formula and then I give live footage. And then if someone wants to be able to get the course, they can actually do it, um, you know, right there. Yeah. Um, you know, on that webinar for uh, this promotion that I have. So, um, so that's one, that's one thing that I would um, recommend everyone going to, because even if you don't buy the course um, and you decide not to invest, you know, in it, um, it's still not a big deal because what you get for free will be enough to have you out, out there immediately going, okay, now I know the six things. I know the six step formula. I need to make sure that all these elements are in every exposure process. <laughs> and everyone that has gone through that course is like the testimonials I have at this point are insane. So when you're in those moments, I want to give you guys a very simple system to help you to overcome fear, anxiety, indecision, apprehension, and doubt. Because those th the three enemies to success, according to Napoleon Hill, are fear, indecision, and doubt. If I was to ask you what the secret to success is, Matt, like give me some traits of, of, of successful people. What would you say? Traits of successful people, they're passionate, committed, passionate, uh, they're committed. urgent, Hardworking, right. dedicated, Willing loyal. To that, bro. Listen. Right? Yeah, you know, all these things, right? You could give me a list. Every one of you guys could give me a list of all of these attributes, and then we could all vote and say, is that person gonna make it? Now, you could give me all those great things, but if at the end of it, I just throw three things on top of it, the three enemies of success, fear, indecision, and doubt. And I said, okay, this hardworking, successful, determined, dedicated individual who's passionate and committed, but let me tell you something else about this person. They're also very fearful. They fear rejection. They fear mm. what other people think. They're also, they're, they're timid, right? If I also said to you, um, they're indecisive. They don't make decisions quickly. You know, when they do, they constantly waddle. Successful people make decisions quickly and change their minds slowly. Whereas unsuccessful people come to decisions very slowly and then they change their minds very quickly. Oh, and by the way, they constantly doubt themselves, their greatness, their abilities. You know, they approach people, you know, from a position of weak posture because they don't have any doubt and belief. You know, the back back is hunched over and they're kind of like, hey, what do you think? But they're hardworking, loyal, passionate, committed. Matt, is that a person that you put your chips on and they're going to make it? Yeah, it's, it's 
hunch down of command. Come on, man. That's a lot of us. A lot of people yeah. watching this, you have all these great, you're passionate, you're driven, you're this, you're that. But if you do not learn how to defeat the three enemies of success, fear, and decision, and doubt, you are not going to make it. You're not going to be successful. And the best way to do it is to reprogram your subconscious mind and to get your subconscious mind to start working for you and with you to propel you out of your comfort zone to seize those opportunities. So the way that you do that, the way that you overcome that is I'm going to give you a simple trick. Anytime you feel fear, indecision, or doubt, you just ask yourself. You have to interrupt that pattern of negative thinking. And the way that you do it is by asking yourself a question because your brain cannot continue to puke and spew all over you if you're asking your brain a question. So the question, it was, what would you do if you were 10 times bolder? Come on. Whatever you think about it, the game and the challenge of B10XB, whatever you come up with in that moment, you have to do it because your brain will give you an answer. Yep. And in that moment, it's like, well, if you were 10 times bolder, you'd walk right up to him. Don't think the weakness is going to stop. Walk right up to him. What are you going to say? I got 10 steps. I'll figure it out. Now, if you don't do it, Matt, we talked about why. It's because you've got that pain association to getting out of your comfort zone. Remember I said I would teach you how to rewire your subconscious mind? Here's how you do it. You have to link pain to not being bold. So whenever you don't take advantage of that opportunity, you grab a little rubber wristband. You can get a rubber band or one of these B10XB wristbands right oh, okay. here. What you do is you take this little rubber wristband, you pull back, and you snap on Woo! your wrist. And what ends up happening is every time you don't do the thing, like if I was like, oh, I'm going to talk to that guy, we'll go talk to him. And I was like, well, no, nah, no. Nah. And I made some excuse. And what it does is it links pain to not being bold. Now, after enough painful snaps, the way that your brain works, because you're wired to move towards pleasure and away from pain, the next time that happens and you're in one of those situations, your brain, after enough painful snaps, will get the link and your subconscious mind will literally, your brain will literally create new neural pathways to what it associates pain and pleasure with. And then it will start to associate pain with not taking those bolder actions. So the next time you're at one of those fork in the road moments, where the next time you're tempted to, to wuss out and take the weaker path, instead of you being paralyzed, you will find that your brain will now be on your side and it will propel you to take the bolder path. It's going to happen immediately. You won't even maybe have to look. You'll just see the opportunity to be like, it's pleasure to, to be bold because it's pain not to. And after you start acting with boldness, because you become what you think about repeatedly do, if you continuously act and do the things that you deem to be 10 times bolder moves for you in your life, if you continuously do that, what, is, what do you eventually become? You become a 10 times bolder version of your already awesome self. Yeah. So the three things that are holding you back right now, the fear, the indecision, and the doubt, those are conquered. Boldness defeats them all, right? So that's how to become a 10 times bolder version of yourself. You guys have got it. It's just a matter of you lifting and getting over the three enemies of success. So that way, there is no obstacle for you to be able to, to freaking have success. We have to get those three things off you. And the only way is to commit to being a 10 times bolder version of yourself. You need to be bolder in that little game that you play every single day. What would I do if I was 10 times bolder? Every time you make a phone call, every time you do anything, anytime you feel fear, decision, hesitation, doubt, ask yourself the question. Caesar, I appreciate your time and attention. And for those who've been watching this again at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time tonight, we're going to be selecting the winner who shared this video the most. Uh, the uh, obstacle is the way book, developing leaders around you, and the leadership quotes to help build your daily affirmations. And if some of you got to think about this, you know, I, I, oftentimes I got a lot of military veterans checking this out, some people that are frustrated with their job, checking our YouTube channel, checking our Facebook uh, live videos. Uh, just, you know, they, they're not in business with me, but uh, they're considering entrepreneurship or they're considering business. Connect with us because we can help you apply these techniques that Cesar Rodriguez is teaching in terms of prospecting into a platform, into a product and service that can help build you a six-figure income, or in my case, a seven-figure income. We've been doing this now for 20 mm. years. Talk and about we're it. A lot of people get this stuff to, uh, done too as well. And so, guys, if, if uh, you've been watching Cesar, make sure you follow his stuff. Cesar, man, I appreciate your time. and very generous, man. Dude, absolutely. <laughs> What's that? He's such a giver. Such a giver. Dude, so are you. That's why I wanted to be here, man. I was just like, dude, how can the two of us together not change some amazing lives, man? So uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Anytime I get a chance to uh, see your people or, or interact with them, because I mean, I, I see them all the time from following you on Instagram. I see these circles of these people and these offices and these meetings that are just jam packed, standing room only. And I'm like, yo, you guys have got an amazing culture. You've got it hype. Yo, Matt is in the streets. Getting it there, making the appearances. I mean, 
he's out there helping to change lives, man. And I, I love to get behind that. And, you know, maybe one day, Matt, I'll get a chance to get in front of uh, all of your people at an event one day. Sure. And I will really lean in and uh, give you guys some powerful stuff because this has been fun. And I already can tell that you've got some of the coolest people following because I've seen the comments here. I've seen the stuff that you guys are saying. Thank you for all of the love. Um, you know, and hopefully maybe one day I'll get a chance to meet some of you guys, shake your hand, take some picture, uh, take some pictures, you know, with the B10XB band too. You can say, yo, I'm a part of the movement. I love it. Very cool, man. If you've been watching this on Facebook, make sure you click our business page, click like and follow the next time we post a new video, we'll go live with a new uh, video. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and join the Money Smart Movement channel. So that being said, guys, on behalf of Cesar Rodriguez, I'm your Money Smart guy. Thanks for tuning in. And, uh, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Have a good day, everybody. Caesar, thanks, brother. Hey, man, my pleasure. Thank you for having me.